grab a chair, everyone. But if you're already sitting down, welcome to the voice acting corner with your host, the original Rubber Ducky and co-host Cameron. So, let the show begin. Hello, hello, everybody. This is the original Rubber Ducky, and I have to apologize. Uh, This episode, we will not be interviewing Darby Cupid. That will probably be next week, but today is a special episode because I got a new co-host, Cameron. So please introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. I'm Cameron. Hi. Uh, yes, um, we uh, we just, well, kind of uh, collabed over Skype just recently, and and uh, I'm going to call you Mr. Ducky because you have way too many syllables in your name. Um, he said, hey, you can string sentences together, and you know some stuff. How about being a co-host? <laughs> I think that was exactly what I said word for word. That's pretty much what yeah, happened. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you, you saw the video. I like posted the video and yeah. you were like, oh, yeah, this yeah. is good content. And I was like, really? Yeah. Thought it was good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you got some paladin skills. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first time I ever played the game and I was really? connecting my, uh, my PS3 controller to it and it was glitching out. So I was just like... <sighs> Okay, I guess it look bad. Uh, look good. Look good. Oh, well, thank you. Got you. Skills. Thank you. Thank you. You know, esports, all that. Yeah, man. Uh, just give me some Doritos and we we can go. Three sixty no scope. Yeah, man. Uh, Headshot. I mean, if you want to talk a little bit of po- about paladins real quick, my main right now is Ying, which is a support character. So okay, I will be showing gameplay of Ying right now. There we go. Ah, lovely. See that? Boom. Look Look how great that one thing was and that other thing I just did. Whew. Look at all those skills. I know. Yeah. And all that support that you're doing. It's, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so um, so uh, I just wanted to, uh, I want to interview you because, you know, we're not interviewing Darby because of reasons. Um, so. Uh, this, that's, uh, that's quite a, it's quite a trade off there, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, I think it's kind of, I think it's fair, you know, that, you know, okay. co-host, you know, I got a yeah. co-host and instead of just an interview, you know, I think, right. I think it's a fair deal. So, okay. fair, um, fair. I heard through the grapevine that this isn't your first time um, doing like a podcast style kind of thing where you're, you're talking and such. Uh, no, it's not. I, uh, I, I tend to fall into these kind of things. I, um. I had an anime review show for a while. I uh, I currently have a Twitch channel. I've done um, you know interviewee type stuff for uh, documentaries and and uh, that kind of deal. So I'm just kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to media type stuff and uh, definitely nerd culture. That's that's totally my deal. You know, if, um, if you want to talk gaming or anime, I'm all over that. And and that's why you're on the show. Not just to be interviewed because you know these things, probably right. more than well, me. <laughs> I know I know a few things. I yeah. know a few things. Um, yeah. Uh, so if you want to check out his old channel on YouTube, which was called Analog TV. Um, Analog TV. Yeah, there you go. Um, and then what's your what's your Twitch? Uh, my Twitch is Acolyte of Game. And what do you do on that Twitch channel? Um, a little bit of gaming, and I also have a DJ show on uh, Sunday nights. I do EDM stuff, so if you like house or trap or progressive house or trance or whatever, anything like that, I just mix a bunch of stuff together, and we all bob our heads and have a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I uh, watched one of your streams, and I was, mm, that was some good you, stuff right there. Were you, were you feeling it? Uh, were you feeling it? I yeah, I, I typed in the chat that I was feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> you even said that I was feeling it. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, it's good uh, good stuff. You know, I'm a, I'm a performer. I mean, I've been acting since I was four-ish. Um, so, you know, I've done some semi-pro stuff, commercials, lots of theater, um, you know, student films, that kind of deal. So, you know, anything, per, in, anything having to do with performance, you know, I'm, I'm all over that. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, 
Similar, similar to me. Similar to me, I would have to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you watched the first episode, you, you would already know that. So watch the first I episode. I watched it. I did. Everyone out it there was... listening right now, watch the first episode. Yeah, go back, watch the first I'll episode. Give, I'll give you five seconds, okay? <laughs> and go. All right, one, two. Ah, eh, forget it. I'll give you two seconds. That's it. Um, you should be back now. Um, so, uh, what got you into like wanting to do voice acting? Um, well, really, I like uh, well, uh, rest in peace, Don LaFontaine. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's the the original movie trailer guy. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, the inner world. Yeah. That guy, um, he started out as a copywriter at an at a uh, marketing firm. And so he was writing the scripts for movie trailers. Right. And at some point, you know, he said, you know, somebody said, well, you're writing the script, do it. And, you know, went from stumbling into writing movie trailer copy to doing over 2,000 movie trailers in his career. Right, right. And, I mean, I would love to be the movie guy, you know? I mean, I just think that that's so cool. You know, it, uh, uh-huh. I mean, we talked a little bit about trailers and, and stuff like that. I just really like that. So mm-hmm. much drama and emotion or whatever in a very short amount of time, you know, plus a little bit of marketing. And, you know, it's uh, that's pretty cool. Okay. Pretty All cool. right. So we're going to let the world hear your inner world. <laughs> okay. All right. Action. In a world full of danger, full of drama. In a world where robots have taken over. Everything you knew is wrong. Coming this summer, Robo Takeover. That was That's real, all I got. No, I, have, no. I was not prepared. I wasn't prepared. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing on here is prepared. Wink. <laughs> wink. 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 <laughs> um, all right. So uh, let's see. What other questions could I? Okay. What gear are you are you rocking with right now? Like what gear am I rocking with? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a Audio Technica uh, AT twenty twenty microphone. Uh, Condenser mic. I also have a AT2020 USB microphone that I use for my PS4 because I got to have the tasty vocals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Got to have them tasty uh, vocals. <laughs> I, uh, I have a Scarlett uh, audio interface, uh, and I just switched to that from... Uh, originally, I had a Behringer Zenix mixer that I used, mm. um, but it's, it had a little bit of jitter in the uh, the USB, like when you used Phantom Power. I'm using big words, I know. Right, right. Um, right. Phantom when Power. Use, when you use Phantom Power, there's <laughs> jitter over the USB, and so I'm like, yeah. okay, I got to get something decent. Um, you know, you can pull that out in software sometimes, but it's a lot easier just to record clean. So Right. There you go. Uh, my Mac, uh, my, or iMac, is, is sort of my workhorse. I use it for recording audio and recording my... Uh, Twitch stuff and gaming and all that. I uh, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. I paid way too much for it. I mean, it paid more than my first car. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, uh, it's been able to hang out with me. And, you know, I mean, just having 32 gigs of RAM. Come on. Yes. Ooh. Feel it. I... Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the heart and soul of my gear. All right. Um, all right. I would love to get into a better microphone, like a, a Blueberry. I love those mics, but mm-hmm. those are crazy expensive. Yeah, definitely not for uh, the the hobbyist like myself. Uh, um, but you know, a grand for a mic. Yeah, yeah. that's that's um, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, a grand. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, just just the next step. You know, I got this two hundred dollar microphone. Let's go a grand. Yeah, let's yeah, do it. Let's go a grand. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Tom. Um if you're if you're familiar with Kevin Pereira, he was on uh G four when that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, he started doing uh he started doing some podcast stuff and he had this blueberry microphone. I'm like, Oh my god, it sounds so good. But I don't have Kevin Pereira money yet, so Yet. 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 We will be there. Yes. And that will uh, tie us into 
the next little thing, which is new for this podcast. I mean, it's only the second episode, so of course there's going to be some new stuff in here. It's all pretty new. Um, so what what I wanted to add to this podcast is um some news about voice acting. Um, okay. Because um, you know, what's the point of having a podcast where we talk about you know what's it like to voice act when we don't talk about what people are doing in the world voice acting? So, uh, right. You brought up a really good topic, so let's uh, let's let's start this off. Okay, um, voice actors, uh, voice actors that have to do with video games, are striking. Yeah, and it's yeah. crazy, isn't it? They can do that. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing that they could do, really. Yeah. Um, but the uh, voice actors union uh, is kind of hosting a strike. They bottom line is they think they're not getting paid enough. Um, right, right. You know, they're they're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to nine hundred dollars for a four hour session, and for normal people, you know, not living in L.A., right, uh, that's a decent amount of money, you know. Yeah. But you know, if you're if you're dealing with that on a regular basis, you know, you're using your voice as your instrument, you know, it can be taxing. And then to say, oh, but we made, you know. A hundred and forty-seven million dollars on this video game, you know. Right. I, I can see where they're coming from. It's just you know we sort of talked about this a little, but having one say, okay, I'm a voice actor. You know, me, Cameron, I'm a voice actor, and I don't work that often. I would love to be working way more often than I am, and I would take your eight hundred to nine hundred dollars for four hours of work in a heartbeat. You know, right, right. But you know, you got to think that these people are are doing this as a full time job. So you go in, you blow out your voice for four hours, you get paid, and then the next day you have to do it again. Yeah. And the next day you have to do it again. And on top of that, you look at EA. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is making literally millions of dollars, and you know you're making a couple grand if you're lucky. Right. Right. So, you know, that's that's kind of where this is coming from. Uh, the, I mean, one of the major spokespeople, uh, Sarah Palmer, you might know her from Halo 5 or Mass Effect 3 or Bioshock Infinite. You know, all those great story-driven games. Yeah, those. Um, you know, she said, you know, bottom line, we're just not getting paid to be in an industry that is making so much money. Right, and I, I can understand that. Um Personally, uh, I'm a music artist and, uh, you know, I had to join a union. Uh, and if those who don't understand, uh, voice actors are under um, most voice actors, I should say, who, um, you know, are professional are under a union. And it's basically the union's uh, job to make sure the actor gets paid. Similarly, with a music artist, they are under a union that makes sure they get paid. So it's the unions that are fighting back because... Uh, the, these issues have been brought up. And as a music artist, we always have to worry about, all right, so if we, you know, give a, let's just give an example. Like, let's say I wrote a song and a movie picks it up. Um, if they pick it up, that means they, they obviously pay for, they have to pay for the song to be on there. But also it's um, a thing that to negotiate for royalties. And what a lot of these voice actors are not getting are any royalties. They're getting a flat fee. Um, so it, it kind of doesn't help the voice actor, um, if they just, you know, set a flat free because, you know, one minute you can be in a game that totally flops or you can be in like GTA five, that's still making a ton of money and you only got paid, let's say a thousand dollars for your role, but the company made a profit of $14 billion or million, not billion, million dollars. <laughs> a man of a video game made a billion yeah, dollars. Game. Yeah, um, yeah, but that's something um, that I I didn't see really brought up. Like I saw it brought up a little bit where you know people make a living off of the royalties because they're con constantly making money. So now right. instead of you know jumping from one paycheck to another paycheck to feed a family or just to pay the bills, uh, I mean it gets a little tiresome unless you're Troy Baker who's just in everything and doesn't have to worry about that because you know right. he just lives in a studio basically. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, and it and there's the interesting part to me is that the people that are in between, you know, mm -hmm. if you get 
a a list celebrity to be in a movie or to be or, or to be a voice in a movie or to be in a video game or whatever, they're automatically going to make a celebrity fee, you right. know, as opposed to a practitioner, somebody that just does voice acting. They're not famous for anything else. You know, they're going to get kind of a, a workman type fee. They're not right. going to get you know, all this other stuff written in because of their, their celebrity status. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, the, the guidelines that are being used to pay these people were written, you know, between 10 and 20 years ago. Right. I mean, we're in a completely different world when it comes to media. You know, nobody even thought about deep storylines in video games that long ago, you know? Right. You know, Pong, whew, great story. <laughs> right. Although there's supposed to be a Pong movie coming out. What? Yeah, I, I've heard stirring. So on. I'm gonna. You keep talking. I'll all right. Search. So basically, the trailer would be like, in a world, pong, boop, boop, boop. Who will win, the left rectangle or the right rectangle? You decide. Pong. <laughs> I could have sworn I saw that somewhere. I'll oh. have to find it before the next episode. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I we got to know right now. We can't be, be spreading <laughs> these mis, you know, information. I mean, we could. I mean. It's a cliffhanger. It's, there you go. There you go. Now. Tune in next time. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be a Pong movie or not? Find out in the next episode of Dragon Ball Copyright Strike. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Ball's that is so probably going to get cut out. <laughs> <laughs> Just b- it. Then, you, then, everybody, oh my then God. nobody will know what I really said. <laughs> right. <laughs> It'll just be Dragon Ball. Did yeah, he just, that's how did he curse? Thing works. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Now i got to find the, the beeping sound. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, uh, yeah, more on this. What What is your opinion, like, just non-factual base. What's your opinion okay. on these people, like you know, or the basically the union uh, starting this strike uh, on major uh, gaming platforms like uh, Blizzard and um, what's the other game? Other platforms. EA. Yeah, and EA Sony games. Activision. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what's your uh, opinion? I. Uh, okay. Cameron personally would love to get into this industry. I, and I'm speaking about myself in third person, I know. Uh, I would, and I would happily take $800 to be a part of it. Because I haven't really had the shot yet. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um, But, on the other hand, I understand that people that actually do this for a living want to, to be paid equally with their counterparts in other media forms. Okay? I understand right. that. <clears throat> However, I don't think strikes help. I don't think they help anything. Um, and and I'm, I'm taking this back to the writer strike that happened four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. Um I was watching Heroes a lot. I love that series. It was great. Oh, man. Heroes. That was good. But I've, that healing chick really, really made me stop watching it. It was <laughs> got super annoying. It's like, ugh. You, you didn't want to save the cheerleader? No. I, I really didn't. She was just like, I can heal. All right. I don't have to worry about you. But everything's wrong. Ugh, get over it. Jeez. All right. We get it. We get Everything's it. Everything's really dramatic. Oh, my uh, God. All right. So continue. But... The the first season of Heroes was amazing. Yes. Right? It was amazing. I mean, the cinematography, the story writing, the acting was all brilliant. Yes. And then the writer strike happened. Yep. And then Heroes was terrible. Yep. For the next two seasons. Yep. It was horrible. It was a slow, painful, spiraling death. And in the process... I don't see anything good coming from it. I mean, now I don't know. I'll have to do. I'll have to do the research. I'm just doing this all off the top of my head. But I didn't hear anybody say. And now the writers are satisfied and they're going back to work. Right. That didn't really happen. Yeah, I didn't hear it anything just, about it either. Right. It was just. Well, I guess we're going to move on, and eventually we'll all get tired of staring at each other. <laughs> Meanwhile, the people that were 
really into a series that was really well done get the short end of the stick. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like the producers of Heroes or, or whatever else, they didn't lose anything. Right. They didn't lose anything. So the only people that really suffer are, in our case, the consumers. Right, the audience. You know, or the customers, yeah, the yeah. audience. Exactly. You know, so it's like, I, I get it. I mean, with this uh, voice actor's strike, there's been, you know, something like 20 different revisions that have happened, and, and neither side is happy. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I understand at some point you have to say, look, this isn't working anymore. We need to take a step back and figure out how to make this work. But at the same time, you know, the people that are actively supporting everybody, you know, if I'm actively supporting Mass Effect, the game, which I love, that means I'm actively supporting EA, but I'm also actively supporting the voice actors. Right. You know, and it's like, I hate it when mommy and daddy fight because I don't get anything out of that. Right. You know, so, I mean, I guess that's the part that kind of sticks with me. It's like, okay, what is this really going to solve? Right, you know? right. And it's not um, like it's back in the good old days where, you know, the whole steel mill uh, strike where the people who, you know, striked right. was basically majority of the people that could work, you know, and then it was yeah. very impactful. Then it was like, all right, there's no one that can work. So we're losing money. I mean, right. to me, um, like EA. OK, I dropped a couple big uh, voice actors. All right. Who was who was the next guy we were going to pick that we thought was good? Oh, he's not striking. All right, let's get him in there. And right. then, then there's the whole quality thing, you know. Uh, no offense, but, you know, I would love, and I mean no offense for myself, but I would love an opportunity to be in a video game. Mm -hmm. I just don't think I'm seasoned enough to, like, be good, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, it's well, like. Well, I think uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's it's part of the industry growing, you know. Right. Like, uh, I mean, I think that's why that they kind of gravitate toward star power because right. these celebrity actors have had the training. They really do know how to handle themselves. Right. I mean, right. if you look at, you know, look at anime from the late eighties, I mean, that was dubbed. I mean, that stuff was terrible, you know, and, and regardless of what people think now, the quality of dubbing is a lot better. Right. You know, um, just because they're getting people that are actually trained that are, that are actors versus animators trying to be actors right. <laughs> you know so i i get that but the industry now is moving along and i think that's what's precipitating this that's what's making this happen mm -hmm. is that you know mass effect 2 that story was amazing there's no way you could have done that with just anybody right right you know you had to have actors that were up to the the task of of making that script writing amazing right you know but they want to get paid for that. Right. Yeah. You and know, that makes which, sense. Um, which is fair. Yeah. I mean, if this strike continues and, you know, we start seeing a lot of big voice actors or just actors in general take part in this, I feel like we're just going to see a whole new wave of actors, voice actors that we've never heard of that actually are pretty decent. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, you're, you're going to get a lot of scabs because, I mean, money is money when you're trying to, you know, feed your family, you know? It's true. And, um, you know, I, I think. It's gonna be it's gonna be kind of a difficult call to see what's gonna happen because I don't see the game industries these multi million dollar game industries really you know backing down to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think at some point they will, but that you have to have the right mouthpiece on the union side. Right. Like you know, you need you need a tro uh, Troy Baker right. to say, okay, no, I'm not I'm not gonna do any more games until X happens. Right. You know. Uh, now, I don't know if he's ever said that, and I don't know if he would say that because he's getting paid. Right, right. You know, but you, you have to have the right person that, that says, okay, no, we need to do this. And you have to have a company that's willing to say, okay, we need to have Troy Baker here. Oh, you know, yeah. and not say, who's that other guy again? <laughs> you right, know? right. And some companies would do that. Some companies, EA, would not. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, they're they're used to going through people, so... You know, they, they're they not going to be ready to negotiate, you know, until it hurts. Right. Yeah. And that's and that was the big point. Like, I don't I don't see it really hurting a lot of these people. It's like it's going to hurt the fan base. Yeah. Like, it's going to hurt them really bad because I know a couple of my friends that will like list off every voice actor in video games. And I'm just like, I like the character. He was pretty cool. And then well, that was before I really got into voice acting 
<laughs> that's when uh final fantasy all the people who are like oh yeah you know you know brian i'm like who's brian you know matthew i was like who's matthew who are wh- why are you calling them by their first names i'm like who are these people i'm like the voice actors and i was like oh that's a thing like um and to me i feel like that's gonna that's who's gonna suffer the most the audience the fan base the consumer oh, yeah. i feel totally. like they're gonna feel the hurt and then slowly the companies will feel the hurt, but they're not feeling the hurt right now. Well, right. I mean, you have to vote with your wallet. I mean, just like everything else. Right. You know, if if you don't like the way EA is handling something, then don't give them your money. Right. It's as you simple know? as that. And and yeah, I mean, it's it's simple, yet it's at the same time that means I can't play Madden. You know. Right. I mean, it's like you gotta you gotta think about that stuff. It's like yeah, it's easy to say. Oh yeah, you know, don't support whatever company you know but oh wait that company made my cell phone oh crap right right (laughs) yeah uh so yeah that was a great little talk we had right there that's all the time that we have uh for this episode so we'll see you next time we'll see you next time are you listening damn this was the voice acting corner with your host, the original Rubber Ducky, and co host Cameron. So stay tuned for weekly podcasts like this. Yeah.